What's going on my friends? Welcome to another video here. My name is Bijan in case anyone is new here and if you're new here, hey, be so kind. Do something nice, you know, drop a like, drop a subscribe. Even if you're old, drop a like as well. If you're middle-aged, young, doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter where you are, old, young, new, hey, drop a like, drop a comment if you're new. I want to know who's new here. And moving forward, what we're going to be doing today is going over a quick, quick trade recap here on Snapchat. I was trading. I say quick, but I always end up being really long, so we'll see how I do today on that. Uh, we were shorting Snap's, Snapchat stock. Snap is the symbol. We were shorting Snap today. And the main reason why I wanted to make this video is because of the fact that I always get, like, for lack of a better word, excited when there's one trade in one direction. And then the next day, we get a trade in the completely other direction. And I just always like to highlight that to show people that you can really trade in both directions if you know what you're doing. So... That's, that's the point here is that yesterday, if you go back to my video from, from yesterday, maybe I'll put like a little banner here, something that you can click on. Uh, we had a profit on a long trade where we basically went long the trade. We bought the shares, hoping for the stock to go up to sell it for a higher price for a profit. What we did here is we shorted the shares. And if anyone needs a more detailed explanation on what shorting is or how shorting works, um, I have a few good examples that are real beginner friendly. It helps people understand it a little easier. Let me know. I'll make a separate video for you guys. Maybe I'll put it on my personal channel or something like that. Just let me know if you guys want to learn from that or if it's something you want to learn about and I'll be happy to make it. So uh, we were shorting where we basically sold the shares at a high price, hoping the stock goes down in price so we can buy those shares back at a lower price, keeping the difference. So we sold, we shorted. 1,500 shares at 50.34. And I'll we'll jump to the chart in a second and we'll talk about why I got in at that area, what I was looking for, what I was watching here. Uh, let's just break down the orders and the numbers for right now and then we'll get over there so we can be done with all of this here. Um, so we shorted 1,500 shares at 50.34. And I had my risk right above, I gave myself about a 75 cent risk on this one. So right above the 51 area, I had it set on my alerts for my uh, stop would have been 51.06. Uh, I like to give a little cushion. So anyways, moving forward here, I shorted 1,500 shares. And then it was about an all day trade, basically right out of the open to, you know, right basically before the market closed. So, you know, just showing that you guys don't have to be glued to the screen all day. You know, you can place a trade, place your alerts and go on with your life, you know, go to work, go to wherever you want, go to your friend's house, go to the gym. I don't know. I'm not trying to tell you guys what to do with your life, but you can do what you want. Anyway, so um, I bought back 1,000 shares. So I basically closed out two thirds of the trade, the majority of the trade at 11.15 at basically the 49 area, it was 48.93. And we'll talk about that as well once I get to the chart here in a second. So we bought back 1,000 shares because when you're shorting, you're selling first, then you buy back to close the trade. You know, normally you buy the shares, then you sell it to close the trade. But shorting is different. So we bought back 1,000 shares. And then I was going to hold the rest until the end of the day with a lowered stop, of course. Uh, and nothing really happened. It stayed the same. It didn't hit my stop. It didn't hit my next profit target. And so I just checked back in, saw we did the same thing. And I said, all right, let's just close it out, wrap it up for the day. And that's where we basically got the total of a $2,030 profit, closing out those last ones at 49.10. So to give you guys a quick calculation breakdown, and we'll jump to the charts, I was in it at 50.34, and then I closed out the majority at 48.93. So that's what, about $1.40, $1.45 um, on that initial initial profit there. And then the additional 500, we got out at 49.10. So pretty much we'll just say the 40, 49 area was the average price. So $1.35 is what we made. That's the difference there from 50.34 to 49, basically um, $1.35. We had 1,500 shares. So 1,500 times $1.35, that's where you get the $2,030 profit there. And let's jump over to the chart now and look at it. See, we got in it at 6.30. 631 basically got out 1115 and then closed out 1243. So if we take a look at the Snapchat down here, we see that first of all, I was looking at it on the 50 area. We can see that even yesterday it had that resistance on the 50, 50, 50. Um, of course, I was trading plug and this was from the watch list as well. So we were watching that 50 area there, watching it for a short play. And this morning I was still watching it. 
it was opening right at that 50 area. But I personally don't like to just jump right into trades. Um, I like to give him a minute or two to work out sometimes. So I said, let me see what he does with this 50 area. We had a minute of just kind of lingering there. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just give it a minute or two more. See what it does. It's not dropping out yet. Let's see if it gives a nice pop, a push, a little squeeze through that 50 area for me to get short into, maybe get a better price. Uh, th this is also probably the options trader within me coming out because it's one thing that I like to do and one thing that I teach to do is to short into strength and buy into weakness because, you know, you get better fills, better spreads, better, you know, chances of getting fills and, uh, you know, implied volatility is more in your favor and all of that. So anyways, long story short, I wanted to short into strength. So I was watching that 50 area, but I said, let me get a little push, see if we can get a little, hey, how you doing? And that's exactly what we did. Um, and that's where I got into it, right at the 631 area here. I shorted into it, 1,500 shares at the 50.34 area right here. And then I had my alerts. I set multiple alerts just to let myself know in case I'm not sitting there watching it because I'm usually not, you know, I'll place a trade. And if it's not one that I'm, you know, really, really quick momentum trade, I'll just place some alerts. And if you guys want a video on me to teach you guys how you set your alerts and how to properly do it, I'll do that as well. I don't want to waste time doing it here because uh, people get mad. They're like, I already know how to do that. I'm like, all right, my bad. I'm sorry. You know, don't yell at me. I'm just, I'm trying to give you guys as much information here for you guys, you know, um, so I'll be happy to do that. But I have a few alerts set. Like I had one set at 50.91 to let me know, hey, we're getting to that 51 area. Get ready. Pull out your phone if you're not there, this, that, and the other. And then my final alert was on the 5106 area. Um, thankfully, it didn't hit even the 51. That's where I was watching it as we kind of approached that 51 area. We started giving some reversal signs. Didn't get above it. Started reversing. And that's where I was like, okay, we're good to go. Um, I didn't need to panic out or anything like that. Obviously, I still had my alert sitting there at that time. So in case it did shoot up that I could get out of the trade for the smaller loss. But this is where I basically realized, all right, cool. We didn't get above the 51 area right around what, like the 703, 704 area. And I'm also, well, 703, 702, I guess we can say is when it was hitting that 51. I'm also comparing it to the market. So I'm looking at the market here. He's already dropping out, going pretty much at the low of the day already, right at that point. When this guy's testing that high, I'm like, all right, there's not enough gas to put even push it through. This guy's about to drop out too, which is exactly what he did. Um, so it was a little bit more of confidence, if you will, a little more uh, confirmation, for lack of a better word here, is that, okay, everything was looking good. And another reason why I wasn't, why I was on the short side of this is one, obviously it hadn't been to that 50 area and on, on a long-term time frame. It's a psychological area. I, you know, had a nice run up and I was just expecting, now I'm not saying it's not going to go above 50. It very well can. It, it, it probably will. Uh, but I was saying hey, a little cool down is expected, a little pullback, a little something, a little, hey, how you doing? You know, and that's what I was trying to play there. Um, and that's basically what happened. Now, the other reason why I was short on it is because I'm looking at the market out of the open. Market's pulling back. He's not even getting above his pre-market resistance. Any and nothing, no highs here, no highs there, pre-market highs, nothing's happening right now. It's going down. Meanwhile, this guy's going up. I'm looking at a few other things and I'm saying, okay, cool. Although we are technically breaking above the 50 area here. There's a song that I like that says, with all the drive in the world, you still need gas. If you know what song that is, comment it down in the description. I'm curious who listens to the kind of mu that music as well. Uh, it says, with all the drive in the world, you still need gas. So same thing here. Yeah, he's breaking out, but it's like, dude, the market's going to be dragging him down. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not helping him out. You know, it's not, the market's not breaking high, shooting up, flying out of the open as well. So it's like all these other ideas tied into one. It's not just the 50 area that we were watching. Uh, so that's why I got the idea of being short on it. And then yesterday we were looking at completely different things. That's where I was long on the trade. Where is it? How do I pull up the trade? It usually has a, oh, maybe under account statements here. Here we go. Uh, here, I already had it pulled up. Perfect. Uh, plug right here. I bought the shares at 25 and then I sold it at 27. I was long. I had things telling me long, things looking at this, looking at that, you know, pointing in its direction. And that's why I was long on that one. And look at, we learned, be able to go with the motion of the ocean, be able to, you know, read the market and all that. We shorted the shares on the next day, completely different stock, but still you're able to do certain things within the market. Um, and that, that's just kind of like my idea that I wanted to point out there with this video in whole is that you can really do both sides of the things. And this also goes to show that you don't even have to be placing millions of trades. I know I got a little sidetracked here, but I might as well just wrap this up here. We'll jump back to the chart, finish it up and we'll end the video on that note. Um, but look at this is two trades right here and we'll go back. We're already back five days. Okay. So you can see this is my week, right? It's Wednesday today. I usually don't trade on Fridays. So 
Let's, and I didn't trade on Monday, as you can see here. Only two trades, guys. Yesterday was a 3,500, 3,400 profit. We'll just say $3,000 profit so nobody gets mad and upset and says, oh my God, he's lying. Uh, you know how people get $3,000 profit yesterday. $2,000 profit here today. Guys, that's $5,000. Like that's enough to cover more than cover my living expenses for a month. You know, I'm not trying to say that I'm the most extravagant person living on like, you know, balling out all the time, but I've, you know, accumulated quite a few expenses for myself at this point in life. Um, and I mean, that's one week here, two days. And what I'm trying to say here is that this can be you for all of December, the whole month, two trades, you're done. Me, I'm more of an active trader. It's not like I have a full-time job and then I'm out there nine to five work and it's like, you know, I'll wake up if I'm not trading. It's like, well, what else am I doing? I'm lingering. Maybe I'll go be, I'm busy certain days. I might not trade, but if I'm not doing anything, I'm usually trading too. So next week's going to come. I'm going to be trading too. So you can do just two weeks, two trades a week. You don't have to even trade Monday or Friday like I did here. I'm not going to trade this Friday. I might probably, will probably trade tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Um, but what I'm trying to say is let's pretend you, you could have called it a, a, a long weekend now, ended it today. You got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, your whole weekend. You made $5,000 this week. Go on with your life. Have a great life. You get what I'm saying? And again, $5,000 again is a lot of money. I don't know who some of you guys are. I see people some comment on some of my videos like, oh my God, you only made like $3,000. I'm like, what are you, how much are you making? Like, you know, like, I'm sorry. It's a lot of money to me. So it's a lot of money, guys. People can live off of that in a month. And I'm not saying this to kind of talk you guys into trading. Obviously, you already want to trade and want to learn how to trade if you're here. I'm pointing this out to show you that you don't have to trade a million times. You don't have to be placing 20 trades today, seven trades tomorrow, the next day, this, that. Look, guys, two trades in one week. That's it. This could be the whole month for somebody. This could be the whole week for somebody. And that's it. Next week, do two, three trades maybe. You get what I'm saying? Be done for the rest of the month, holidays. So anyways, that was that. Just kind of showing you guys how you can, you know, just one, a few trades is all you need. Be very selective with your trades. And two, look it. Long on one, then the very next day we flip the script. Be able to, you know, go with the motion of the ocean. Uh, so just jumping back to the charts here on this Snapchat guy, like I had mentioned, I got into it right out of the open. I got in it right around the 5035 area. I had my stop right around the 51 area, but I like to give myself some cushions because they like to tease you a little here and there. So that's where my alert was at the 5106. That's where I would have gotten out of it. Um, and it didn't go above that. It didn't even go above the 51. My primary profit target was 4850. And I had an alert set right there, but I was washing my truck at the time. And I just pulled out my phone real quick to see, okay, what are these alerts going off? Is it a bad one? Oh no, it's not the one saying that we're going up, that we're going to have to take a loss. It's the one saying we're at a profit. So I said, okay, cool. Give me a few minutes. I'll, you know, finish up this part right here, dry up my hands and then we'll be good. I don't need to panic right now. Uh, it's the profit one. And by the time, you know, I came back and looked at my phone, we were already at like the 48, like 80 area. So I said, all right, dude, at that point, might as well just stick it out. I'll lower my stop to the 49 area. If we go back above the 49, I'll close some out. And that would be it. And that's exactly what happened. I had my alert. I set it at the 49 area. A few minutes later, it literally pinged it. I'm like, oh man, all right, we're at the 49. Let's go in. Um, and that, it, let me go back to this one. I like the way this one looked better. Um, that's where basically I closed out a thousand. I closed out the majority of it right here at the 4893 there, as you can see, uh, 1115 here. Where was it? Right around here was 1115 where I closed out a thousand shares. And then I held the rest, the 500. I lowered my stop now to my entry point. So I put an alert at the 50.35 area and said, all right, if we go back above this area, close out the 500, meaning you close out break even on those 500. And then you still got to keep that profit that you made on the thousand that you already locked in. I call this safe trading. You're locking it. You're still trading with house's money technically. Um, and even if it goes against you and it hits your alert and you have to stop out, you're still in a profit for the day. Uh, and that's basically what I said is if it hits that area or goes down to my next profit target, 4750, then I'll close it out. And neither of it happened. None of my alerts hit. So I check back in at the end of the day and I see, okay, dude, nothing's happened right here at the 1243 area. This is where I closed out the rest of the 500 at that 4910, basically closing it out at the average price of 49. So I was in it at basically 5035 out of it, 49 had a profit of $1.35 there, 1,500 shares times that $1.35 per share profit. That gives you guys the $2,000 profit there. And that's pretty much that, guys. Again, we were shorting the shares. We're just going to wrap it up on this note. We've shorted 1,500, closed out some there, closed out the rest at the end of the day. And that's pretty much that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I don't want to make it too, too long here. I already went way over. It's funny. I say that I'm going to make these videos short 
and then it ends up being the longest one of the bunch. So anyways, if you guys want to learn how to do this stuff, or maybe you just want someone to find these trades for you, you want to be part of our watch list, this trade was on the watch list as well. I'll put the links in the description below so you can join us there. Uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever else there is. Who's Bijan T? I'll put links for that as well. Uh, and that's pretty much that. If you haven't subscribed yet, please be so kind. Hit the thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot, motivates us to do these videos more. And with that, I leave you guys with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys had a great day, a great night, just a great life. And I will talk to you all soon.